God compares an akazu so that my household can be full. So when a principality brings government, you need another agent to compare people to come. You can build a church but to be empty. Some of you cannot perceive the power to live above sin. Not because you don't want to live above sin, but you have not understood righteousness. The day you understand righteousness, you will discover that the power to live above sin was always there. Some of you have been held down by demons and the demon has been molesting you in your dream. The demon has been molesting you and you have prayed in tongues. You have fasted for three years, but the demon is still there because you don't have understanding of your authority doctrinally over demons. So you don't know what to do. Even though you are praying, you are praying in fear and the demon can perceive the fear out of your spirit. So even if you say, in the name of Jesus, the demon will be there. Say, are you done? <laughs> but the day you know doctrinally your authority over demons, you will discover that before you pray, the demon will check out. Because the demon knows, now you know. So most times, the reason we don't have certain levels of resort is because of our doctrinal ignorance. We cannot idol. Paul was writing to the church in Corinth. They were living in sin. And he told them, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? He said, him that is joined with a harlot is one with her. And he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. It reduced iniquity in the church in Corinth. Because now they know that their body is not just flesh. That their body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. There's a consciousness now what you touch. There's a consciousness now what you do. Because you now know that even your body is vital in the equation. It took doctrine to come into that awareness. This is why if we want people to be productive, we must teach them doctrine so that they can idol. The third level of knowledge is epignosis. I'm showing you how productivity in the kingdom comes. Epignosis. This is experiential knowledge. Ephesians 1, verse 17 and 18. It's going deep, a bit deeper now. Start from verse 15. So, the first knowledge is what? Achieved through diligence. Second knowledge is acquired through doctrine. We are on number three. Therefore, I also, after I heard of you, of your faith in the Lord Jesus and of your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the epignosis of him. This is experiential knowledge. This level of knowledge is superior to idol. This kind of knowledge is a knowledge born out of encounters with Christ. You know, John was speaking in 1 John chapter 1 from verse 1. He said, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen, we have looked upon, and our hands have handled. That is experience. At this level, you are not being told about God anymore. You have begun to encounter God. But the key to accessing this type of knowledge, Paul gave it to us. For this cause, I bow my knees and pray to the Father and God of our Lord Jesus Christ. So if you want to have a prognosis, you must engage God for yourself. This is where prayer comes in. So if you find a believer who does not have a prayer altar, a consecration of prayer, he will never know Jesus. So most of the brethren who come to church, when they are praying, they go out as if they are they want to pick something quickly. <laughs> or if prayer is long, they will now sit down and put their head down. They are waiting for the prayer to be over. They will remain children in this kingdom. If you want to know Jesus, you will crush the flesh in intercession. If you don't pray, you can't have those encounters. He say, I pray so that your eyes will be open. And above all, you too must pray for yourself. If you don't pray, because there are two things that happen for epignosis to take place. Number one is the operation of the spirit of wisdom. Number two is the operation of the spirit of revelation. He said, when he prays, 
God will grant you what? The spirit of wisdom and revelation. It is the operation of spirits that makes you come into epignosis. So for that spirit of wisdom and revelation to work, you must intercede for yourself. This is why many people, they've been Christians five years, ten years, they know nothing about God because they've never perceived God for themselves. And trust me, there is a level of resort you can't command until you know Jesus. I've been to places before I stood and it was, if you don't produce this resort here today, you are in trouble. When I traveled to Pakistan, you know the way they, they invited people. It's in 90, I think 97 or 98 percent Islam, I've forgotten. If you Google it, Google it, you will see it. They sent buses to different villages. You know what they told them? A healer is coming. I said, ah. I didn't remember telling you I'm a healer. I told you I'm a revivalist. I'm an evangelist. I'm coming to preach the gospel. My host told them a healer is coming. So both Muslim and Hindu packed all the sick people in buses. They are bringing him to the healer. <laughs> <laughs> now, the people gave me some level of tolerance because if he can heal the sick, let him go ahead. We are watching. In case the thing doesn't go as planned, two police officers stood on the stage with guns. <laughs> and the car was parked close because they told me, in fact, most of the places we went for crusade, we did one day and left because the guy doesn't have all the connection for the whole security apparatus required. I, I came the first night, charged. I was thinking if I come, if I ascend. <laughs> I wanted to enter my, my frequency. If I talk, the guy will say, excuse, what did you say? Ah, my spirit went down. You know, the way uptrans work is that you build. You build. It's as you are talking, the energy is coming. You are ascending, you are ascending. I will try to ascend. He will say, wait, wait, wait. You what? Oh! I say, Lord Jesus, I am in trouble today. I don't know how I came here, but I know you sent me. I preached for 40 minutes. Even me, I was tired. Because everywhere was dry. I had to go back to my encounters. And I remembered some words that Jesus told me himself. He committed himself to me. One of the things Jesus told me, he said, because I live, you will see tomorrow. Ah! You know, even if you are in the valley of the shadow of death, you know you, you can't die. Yes, because I live. That one is not a doctrine. That is what? Epignosis. Many Christians don't have epignosis. That's why you are stranded in life. See, if you begin to engage God in prayer, you will discover that you become like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. It's not about an apostle or a prophet. It's about intimacy with Jesus. Recently I was in Zambia. I think that was in December. And Jesus passed and whispered, no disease. Mm. Ah! I now told my friends, I said, this year we will pursue sickness everywhere. <laughs> because he said it. It's not, there's no way you can explain it. It's not doctrine. It's intimacy. That's why the only way to get it is by engaging God for yourself. And everybody who wants to have epignosis must find out his gateway into the spirit. Some of you is worship. Some of you is prayer. Some of you is fasting. Some of you is solitude. If it's epignosis you are looking for, you will follow that route for a long time. And a day comes, the more you go, the more you have encounters. Like Moses, his father-in-law told him, that mountain called Horeb. He said, God encountered your fathers there. And every day, the Bible said, Moses kept going to the backside of the wilderness. He will finish with the flock and he will go to the backside. One day, as he came, he, heard the, he saw a bush burning. That was not consumed. The, the potter had opened. And a voice came out, take off thy sandals. Where you are standing is a holy ground. The guy knew that his life was about to change. And when he walked towards it, the immortal began to speak to him. And he said, I've heard the cry of my children by reason of their taskmasters. And now I want to send you. No, Moses didn't have doctrine, but he had epignosis. 
He said, go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. The guy was not taught. He had to come back to the elders of Israel because what, what are the oracles of God again? I was born, I was in Egypt. I didn't have the opportunity of learning all the ways of the Torah. I was in the palace of Pharaoh. The little I know are the ones the midwife taught me. What are the secrets of God? He didn't know it. There were no books to read. He was just a prince until he had bodies. And the day he executed that body, he had to run for his life. But he heard that there was a God that encounters men. And he began to engage the altar until that God appeared to him. When Moses returned, he had more stature than all the doctors of the law. Because he came as one who has met God. Even the rod of Moses became the rod of God. If we stop at the level of doctrine, we will become Pharisees. If we want more, we have to engage the order. Start the fire, the king was the first who saw their God. He said, who is the fourth man? He looked like the son of God. You know, you don't need to introduce him. His majesty is too excellent. Epignosis. Listen. Find what opens your realm. Find it. This one is beyond Bible study. It's beyond church attendance. If it's worship, <laughs> make it your life. If you are sleeping, let it be playing. Because why men sleep? The enemy is sowing. That means God works when men sleep. Even when you are sleeping, let the sound be there. And anyone that arrests your spirit, eat it until it eats your soul. There are certain sounds that I hear and it carries me to realms. I play only that sound sometimes for four weeks. And it keeps playing, it keeps playing, it keeps playing. And it's drawing my spirit, it's drawing. Sometimes you go to sleep and a cherubim comes. There's no way you can explain it. It's the pathway of epignosis. Sometimes I'm reading the Bible and one verse of scripture will stand up. Oh! I will quote that verse. I will talk that verse. I will eat that verse until the verse will open and become a door. See, every verse of scripture is a gate. If it opens, you can walk in that path for a lifetime. Sit there. Don't rush. Spiritual things are eternal. They are deeper than your age. But they will carry you to realms where you can never know their end. You will just walk it for the rest of your life. All of that is designed to give you a knowledge that cannot be found in a textbook. It's called epignosis. Then you have what we call ginosko. Ginosko is not just experiential knowledge. Ginosko is an experiential knowledge that produces results. It's like having intercourse and offspring come out. There is an experience that fortifies you to know the whole reality of a matter. But there's another experience that must produce result. Those of you who are scientists here, you know, it's not every kind of intercourse that produces children. But you know what it means. You know it by experience. You may not even know biology, but you have experience. But there are others that must produce pregnancy. When it begins to produce result, it moves from epignosis to ginosko. This is why you must handle God until God becomes a reality that your world cannot deny. Paul said to Timothy, he said, give thyself wholly to these things. 1 Timothy 4.15, that your profiting will be made manifest to all. So you have to keep giving yourself wholly until profiting happen. See, spiritual things are not things you come to brag about. Some people pray three hours, and because they've done it for two months, they now begin to walk with a limp as the men of prayer. Even when they come to church, they will, three of them, four of them will stand in one location. Those are prayer people. <laughs> Meanwhile, this prayer is barren. The prayer cannot, de it cannot dematerialize cancer. The prayer cannot open a territory. The prayer cannot stop addiction. But they, they don't know the purpose of spiritual things. And, and, and they are walking like spiritual men. If you have headache, you meet them, they will, nothing will happen. They can't give you any accurate prophetic direction. Even themselves are not seeing any transformation yet. They are just exerting their will. They have not entered the realm, but pride has entered. 
You see some people, they call them fasting machine. They don't smile. When they, when they come to church, they walk like men of the realm. It's childishness. You must migrate into Ginosko. See, the proof that you are doing a spiritual thing is the result you command. Yes, sir. He said, thou shalt know the truth. And the truth shall what? Make you free. So the proof that you have known is the level of freedom you enjoy. There must be tokens. It's called the vindication of the spirit. It says Christ was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit. So every spiritual activity must have a justification. That's what proves that what you are doing is all religion. But you see, we don't press for reality. So we end up impressing ourselves, but the people of the world are looking at us. Say, oh, this is your prayer. What has it produced? You can't bring any policy that will move the nation forward. When they are making decisions about territory, you are not there. People are sick. If doctors don't intervene, they are finished. And you are walking up and down. During COVID, they say church is non-essential. Ah! That was when some of us lost our peace. But they won't try that. If people... If hospital gives up on people and they bring them to church and they are walking out, when COVID comes, they will look for church. But our church is a place of religion and rituals. So the last time they checked, most of the results came from hospitals. So they didn't see the need why church should be there. They saw it as a risk. <laughs> so instead of being offended at them for thinking that way, we should respond with dimensions that they can't deny. It was spoken about John G. Lake in the city of Spokane. They brought terminal cases that hospitals gave up on and they were cleansed and clinically verified. A point came, secular news outlets stated that Spokane is the cleanest medical city in the world because of John G. Lake divine healing technician training. If the result is there, nobody can deny it. And this is why we must migrate. I'm telling you about kingdom productivity. Because God will begin to draw you. First, you discover that your brain, you begin to have understanding to explain spiritual things. And it makes sense. Then you begin to understand doctrine. And God is pushing you to study more. Then you begin to have hunger to press. You don't stop there. The hunger must bring you to a place where you start producing results. So you move into Ginosko. And if we will change our world, yes, we need men that have Ginosko. Yes, Some will have Ginosko in the area of wisdom and creativity. So when they pray and they finish praying, they will come out and tell you, I saw a picture. And they will draw something and it will become a model of a car that a company will buy and it will become the next reigning car. That's Ginosko. When they finish praying, they will come back and tell you, I saw a fluctuation in the stock market and I saw that this particular thing shot up. Everybody buy it too. That's Ginosko. When they finish praying and come, and come back, they will tell you about the shape of the territory. What will happen in two weeks? I saw something like an earthquake in the north part of the town. And then the church begins to concentrate and truly earthquake happened. You now know that the church is relevant. Or they come from the place of prayer. Everybody who is sick, they pray for them, they are healed. That's the level God wants to bring us to. It's called productivity. See, if you know that, you can walk as one man and go to a city where nobody knows God. You will bring kingdom there. Because you are not going with religious practice. You are going with something that cannot be denied. Because anybody who has answers, the world must hear him. Kinosko. Then you go to the final level called Dokimazo. Dokimazo is knowledge that is proven. Romans 12, verse 2. That's why, <laughs> don't come for service. They prayed for four hours. You say this prayer is too much. It's not too much until you can produce something. You are still at the level where you are nurturing an appetite and you say it's too much. Nothing has broken out. It can't be too much yet until you get something. You say, do not be conformed to this world, but be yet transformed by, by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The word 
Dokimazo is a word proof. It's a kind of knowledge that vindicates and validates. This is when you become a witness. So when you show up and you tell somebody, God is real, and he says, prove it, you can. If you come somewhere and you tell people, God heals the sick, and they say, no, it's a religious cliche, you tell them, bring it, bring the sick. A story was told about a woman called Ami Sempe McPherson. She was working miracles in the city and they say it was a lie. She now organized a service and said, bring only those on which years. We must prove it. And journalists came, doctors came. They verified people clinically to be lame and they brought them. In fact, the way she does publicity for her service is strange. She will go and stand in the city center. She wears white garment, like Catherine Kuma came later and was doing the same. She will stand in the middle of the city. When people gather, she will now run into the auditorium where she's doing the meeting. And the whole people will run in. When they run in, she will turn and say, sit down. You can't go out. <laughs> the weight of the presence the lady commanded. She will just stand in a way and everybody is looking who is this pretty lady on the garment and they will look when she sees that the number is enough she will start running they will pursue her she will enter a hall as they enter sit down and then she will preach and convert people and go to another city the news started spreading of the power of god that she was commanding and they wanted to come up with ways of discrediting what she was doing no most challenge we will prove it and she demonstrated it. That means it's not a fluke. It's something that can be replicated. So such, and that's the realm where you can say tomorrow is prophetic service. Prophetic service is not intercessory service. If you say it's prophetic service, you will prophesy. You can say tomorrow is healing service. They will bring the sea. We have somebody in Nigeria called Pastor Chris Yakilomo. He said they don't preach in healing service. In healing service, you heal the sick. And they will arrange sick people. He will come out and go straight and begin to heal the sick. And he will finish. When he finishes, people travel from all around the world to come and spectate. Spectators, they will just come and watch. When he's done doing it, he will now appreciate partners, appreciate all those who came from all around the world. There's no energy. The guy knows it. From the place of rest, shows up out. Out, 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 be healed. The other time he came and the people were many. He wanted to lay hands. Dokimazo happened to him. He just stepped back and looked at them. He said, all of you are healed. No prayer. <laughs> he was angry. He was, he was angry at the devil. You are all healed. And everybody stood up. I'm not talking I have headache. From which years? People with cancer. And if he's taking testimony, sometimes it's eight months later so that you can verify before and after. That's Dokimazo. But they grew. I'm showing you this so that you will not be discouraged. See, some of you tried something and it looked as if it didn't work. Maybe you were at the level of idol. Keep pushing. There are more realms. There's a man called Aginasari in Ghana. I was watching his clip. I almost wept. That's the most casual ministration I've seen in my life. When he was done preaching, he said, everybody with crutches, bring it now. <laughs> People are not walking, he said, bring it. Bring, how will they bring it? And they gathered it, they collected it. They were all healed completely, completely with ease. It's called Dokimazu. And that's a realm for everyone. You have the Holy Ghost because he wants to guide you into Dokimazu. So when you get there, no territory will be hard. And you don't have to wait until you get there because these are experiential knowledge. So where you are, you keep dreaming. I've gone to places before. I prayed for the sick. Nobody was healed. I said, okay, maybe I'm still at doctrinal level. I went and prayed more and came back. And then every time you press, God will honor you by increasing your measure. Because this thing is not just about getting the work done. It's about making you become. It's a follow me, I will make you fishers of men. 
So you are made in the process of service. We can all do it. We will all do it. And we will not be discouraged. If I pray for somebody who is demonized today and the person, the demon is not cast out, I will not for one second think it's impossible. I will know there's something I don't know. I'll go back and check and come back. If I pray today for the sick and they are not healed, I will not be ashamed. I will know there's something I don't know. I will come back. That means there are realms of knowledge I need to access. And so for me, one of my motivation in doing what I'm doing is that I am becoming more. I am growing more. I am transforming more. So even when I'm not getting certain results yet, I know there is a ladder I need to climb. So the reason I keep pressing is not just because of the assignment. It's because of who I'm becoming in God. Knowledge. Knowledge. You need to know. That's when the quality of your life in the spirit increases. There are some who are at the level of gnosis. There are some who are at the level of idol. There are some who are at the level of epignosis. There are some who are at the level of ginosko. And there are some who are at the level of dokimazu. Those ones are trainers. They can call you and impart some to you. That's dokimazu. I know you want to heal the sick, but you are still at doctrinal level. But there is so much work to do. So they lay hands on you and put a measure on you. Be using that one while you are growing. It's dokimazu. Christianity is real, but there are protocols, and we must learn it. So don't run away from the prayer meeting. Don't run away from the Bible study. The longer, the better. Sit there. Even when your mind is tired, your spirit is not. Something is happening. Because you will need to prove this thing in your personal life, and then prove it in the life of others. Trust me, there's an evil day for everybody. But for those who are prepared, the evil day becomes the day of testimony. Because you have testimonies when you change the impossible. Praise God.